We need to seat these valves in here and a certain way to do this. You take valve grinding compound and you can use this special tool here. It has suction cups on either end and we'll work the valve back and forth. And what that's doing is grinding this valve to sit perfectly onto the head of the engine. So I'm gonna take the new valve out of its package and right here, this angle that's where it's going to be seating onto that ring there. So what we need to do is make sure that angle is perfect, perfectly matched to that. So what I'm going to do is take some of this valve grinding compound. We don't need too much. We just need a little bit around that edge. Just like that. And then I'm just going to work it around with my finger. Make sure it's everywhere. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the hole. Then we can take our suction cup here, push it down, grab on it with the suction cup, and just move it back and forth. And we'll do this for a while, say probably about five minutes on each valve to make sure they're perfect. And we'll just keep doing this until we know the valve is seated. So there are some theoretical ways to get this job to go a little bit faster. If you, we made this little contraption here. This is a valve shaft from a bad valve before. This could go right here into the rubber tube. And then you could put this end on the drill. And then you can lap the valves with the drill. It's a little bit faster. But honestly, it's not that hard to, I mean, it doesn't take that much time. It's just a little bit more elbow grease. And I like having the control. I like to be able to feel it. With the drill, you have to run it one direction and then you do have to go the other direction. And that's just making sure the grit isn't just, I guess, imagine if it stayed in one spot and just grooved it. I guess there's certain ways where going back and forth is also gonna do more action. It's gonna grind more away than doing it by hand. So by hand, I think is the best way to do it. And it really doesn't take much time. I have this all ground down now, and I can go ahead and wipe all the compound off. And we wanna make sure we get all this off so the valve will seat properly. One thing I like to do is once I get that wiped off, just take some kerosene and just kind of spray that down so we can get this nice and clean because we don't want anything falling in there. While the engine is open like this, we might as well clean it a little bit. Now we can go ahead and take this valve and put it back in. If you take a look at where it actually is seating, the mating surfaces, you can see all that black is ground away. And what this means is this is where everything is going to make perfect contact. So this is going to be a perfect fit to the seats, the valve seats right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in. And then one thing I like to do is take this back on and just feel it. And that fits really well. It actually stops spinning. That is, I mean, lapping is one of the most accurate ways to put that in. If you're making like uh, machining blocks that have to be accurate within like millions, you can use basically it's lapping compound and that will get it perfect if you take two flat blocks and grind them together. This is a very precise way of getting two objects perfectly the same angle. Now, just for the final test, what we're gonna do is a water test. So, of course, we need to plug this hole right here where the spark plug goes so we can fill this with water. So we're gonna thread the spark plug in, and then also, you don't need the valve springs in here. What I'm just gonna do is real lightly just make sure those valves are seated in there just so the water won't leak around them. Some people will take it like an air gun and blow up here with air, but I, I mean, it's a good test, but I do think you have to have the valve springs on for that because the air would blow the valves up actually. So we're just gonna do this without the valve springs and just if any of the water leaks through, we know we don't have a good seal. Now we'll go ahead and tighten down the spark plug so it'll hold water. We don't need this too tight, just that's good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and 
my water and then we'll slowly pour this in it's tricky you have to you kind of use the surface tension of the water to fill this up full because we want all the valves completely submerged if you can get this if you can get the head level perfectly level that'd be good so right there is good all the valves are completely submerged in the water so now we'll just let this sit for an hour i guess and if any of the water goes down and it leaks through the valves if you see any wetness underneath the head then we'll know that one of our valves did not seat properly and we need to relap it and then do the water test again and just make sure everything is seating perfect because if it holds water like this it'll hold air and it'll compress so it's been about an hour two hours and I haven't seen the water level go down at all. I also put some toilet paper in the holes here, just so if any water drips, it'll really show up on the toilet paper. And this seems perfectly dry, there's no water on it. And this one right here is the same, it just seems perfectly dry. And also, there's one right here and this one, I do not see any water on it. That's just oil, I can tell. And then, no water. Um, so that looks pretty good. The water level is not going down at all, so if you don't have the toilet paper in, you can judge by the water, or if there's just any water underneath it. But this passes the water test, so we can go ahead and move on to the next cylinder. We can test this again whenever we put the springs on, we'll all four spark plugs in and we can test all of them and we could even take some compressed air and spray just a little bit up these just to see if it bubbles at all around the valves but i'm going to go ahead and just take an old sock and we can soak up the water so we found that doing the water test method has always worked well whenever we put this all back together it has good compression and we just had good luck with this test so I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.